guys? We are here with Norfolk State head coach Dawson Odoms. Coach, the first question is, you guys had a very successful season, just one game away from getting that getting that MEAC championship. What are the keys, in your opinion, to, to achieving that championship goal for Norfolk State this season? Well, I really think the continuity from players to coaches, coaches to players, players' parents to the coaches, and coaches to the players' parents, and just getting them comfortable level with the lay of the land. I think you're more successful in year two because you have a good understanding of your product. And I think it's about relationships. Uh, this is a great place. I think Norfolk State is a hidden gem, uh, but I think we're about to be discovered uh, because we have great leadership. I think Dr. Adams Gaston is an outstanding leader for our university as our president and Melody Webb as our athletic director. You can't you can't go forward without great support, and I, I really think we're destined for some great things here. And I'm looking forward to the season because I really think this football team's got a chance to be very successful. And the quarterback battle is going to be a big conversation piece all offseason. You guys lose a, a, a great quarterback. I got to see him at the Legacy Bowl. What has the quarterback battle been like for you, and what are you looking for in a signal caller to lead your team into 2022? Uh, it's been a great battle. I think uh, the spring we brought in a guy and then this summer we brought in another guy and then we got some returning players and a freshman that we're bringing in just get the competition i think competition makes everybody better but what we're looking for is a guy that's disciplined i think on and off the field you can't just be a guy that performs well on the field and then the classroom is not important you're you're the face of the program and we need you to be a pro in all aspects a pro on the field a pro off the field we want you to be a pro person and I think that's what it's all about, is getting that position to understand that and then being a great leader while you're there. People don't want to follow a guy that's not doing all the right things, and you don't want that at quarterback. I think when you look at some of the quarterback stories around football period, whether it's college or NFL, you're starting to see that, and it's create a lot of dissension in the locker room. So it's one of the, the biggest battles that you can have as a position, especially at, at football. But I do think that if it's the right guy, you got a chance for a lot of success. And, and we're happy for the guys that we got because we thank all those guys that play that position for us are, are great people and great leaders and good players. Running back was a huge spot for you last season. J.J. Davis part, like, burst onto the scene. I picked him as our best running back in the MEAC going into the season. Speak a little bit about his development and what makes him such a successful running back. Talent. Speed, combination of, of speed, talent, athleticism, uh, ability. Uh, I think his balance is, is something that he has that separates him and his speed. Uh, and his, his knowledge of the game. I think the offense that we're switching to is one that's going to really showcase his talent and put him in a position to be even more productive. Uh, I think he's one of the better football players on our team. I think he's a great person. Uh, I want him to grow into leadership, uh, and we're going to help him. Uh, I think you do have guys that have leadership capabilities, but they also need to be nurtured in, in what does that look like and how do I become that? So our program was real big on developing leaders and putting them in a the position to, to be leaders, and I think he's one for our football team. One of the biggest important positions, especially in the MEAC, and I've heard this from players, is that the offensive line is just different in the MEAC compared to some other conferences. You got one of your guys, Colby Bird, here with you today. Speak a little bit about the offensive line development and what this, what we can, what we can expect from this unit going into 2022. Well, I think we're gonna be a pretty good, pretty good unit. I think we lost some players that were really talented and. Uh, some guys with the transfer portal, but we were able to sign some guys that I think will really help our football team. Uh, the key with them is just getting some continuity, you know, reps together and then developing, I think, from a technical standpoint. As long as they do that, I think they got a chance to be very successful. But you can't be a good offense without an offensive line, and I think our offensive line was, was really good last year, and I think we're looking for the same kind of success in 2022. The secondary is also a big piece to, to Norfolk's success, man. Two of the best corners in the, in the MEAC. Speak a little bit about just what we expected from that secondary this year and how they can take a step forward in 2022. Well, we return all our starters back there. So uh, from safety and corner and the nickel position, all five of our guys returning are have played and started for us a year ago. So that makes you feel pretty good as a coordinator. Now, don't overload their they, they microchips now. Just still give them a, a chance to grow and develop in the playbook and allow their talents to take over. Our communication is the biggest thing. And I think when you have that many returning guys in the secondary, you can see that why I would be so excited and the anxiety levels would be high 
as we get ready to approach the season is because I really think those guys are going to have a chance to be successful. Throughout spring and summer, you've really seen this team grow and mature. Who are some young guys that have really stood out to you that can emerge as leaders for this Norfolk State team? Well, I think the jury is still out. Uh, hadn't really had a chance to, to see them because we haven't been in pass. Uh, I'm reluctant to talk about how good a guy is when I haven't seen him in, in pass. And a lot of our young guys just got here this summer. Uh, coming out of spring ball, we, we really didn't have anybody that just uh, blew the roof off of it. But I really think that we have some guys that are poised to step in to that role and getting better. You can see it in the summer. Now I'm waiting to see us get back in pass and fall camp and to see is that the guy that is ready to take the next step. So we do have some guys, but the jury's still out. Final question, Coach. What makes this Norfolk State team different from last season? This one. They know the process now, so they've seen it. They saw it through six games, and then they saw what happened the last three when you don't fall. So leadership, just having great leaders. So I think our locker room and our culture has been defined, and we're so ready for 2022, and I think these guys are ready for it, but I think it's our discipline and our culture is totally different from a year ago. And you can see the smiles on these guys' face and the excitement that they're having. And that makes us really excited about this season. Coach, I appreciate your time. You guys heard them. It's going to be an exciting season for Norfolk State. Stay tuned for more content from MEAC Media Day.